Uh, Sandro Lima earned his bachelor degree in physics from the State University of Maringa, and uh, he went to complete master in PhD and postdoc in uh, Institute of Physics of São Carlos, University of São Paulo. Um, and since uh, 2004, he joined the University of uh, Mato Grosso do Sul in Dourados, in the west part of Brazil. His uh, expertise lies in the field of applied physics with a uh, focus on thermal and optical properties of condensed matter. Professor Lima's research uh, extends to multidisciplinary areas. He contributes to the development of new materials for photonics applications, uh, exploring optical and thermal properties of condensed matter. His academic leadership is evident through his role as coordinator of postgraduate uh, courses in the interdisciplinary area of CAPES, a prestigious uh, Brazilian agents that support uh, higher education. He also served as coordinator of the natural research studies of uh, his university. Uh, his uh, scholar uh, work is substantial with a publication of more than 106 papers, eight index of 27, reflecting the significance and influence of his scientific contributions uh, in applied physics. Uh, Professor Sandro's dedication to research and education continues to shape uh, the academic landscape and advance of understanding of materials and their applications in photonics uh, technology. On the behalf of our real members, I will welcome you, Professor Sanders, into this webinar. And also welcome all the invited guests and participants. Now I kindly request uh, Dr. Lima to begin his presentation. So have a good uh, presentation, everyone. So um, hello, everybody. Um, Thank you, Professor Tomás Catunda, by the introduction. I would like to thank the organization committee by the invitation in the person of Professor Sankara Haman. Um, before to start my talk, uh, I would like to give you uh, some brief information about my location in Brazil and about my institution. Uh, as mentioned by Dr. Catunda, uh, I'm from Brazil and I'm living and working in Mato Grosso do Sul. Uh, state in the center west region of uh, the country, in the border uh, with Bolivia and Paraguay. Mato Grosso do Sul can be considered a young state in Brazil, so it was created in 1977. In this month, uh, it's completing 46 years old. Geographically, it compre uh, comprehends part of the biomes Pantanal, Cerrado, and some fragments of Atlantic Forest. Uh, the total area uh, the, of the state is approximately the same of German, but the population is close to 2.8 million uh, people, only 3.3% of the German population. Its economy is based in agriculture and livestocks. There are uh, 79 states or uh, 79 cities in the state, with Dourados being uh, the second higher population in the state with 243,000 habitants. In Dourados is the administ administration of our university, uh, uh, but is offered courses in all these cities indicated in blue and green in the map. In total, the university offers uh, 58 undergraduate courses, 14 master's programs, and two PAG programs. Particularly, uh, I work in one of these two PhD programs, named uh, Postgraduate Program in Natural Research, that is organized with researchers from different natural science, like physicists, biologists, chemists, and some engineers. With this stuff, we had developed research in a multidisciplinary uh, way, so that I organized my talk to show you some examples of our uh, efforts. So, uh, in my title, the photothermal properties represent the studies that we have made or developed with thermal lens and photoacoustic methods that we have explored using different uh, certs in the UV visible regions 
also in the near infrared. And in particularly the photoacoustics we use in the mid-infrared mid region. Um, the optical properties represent what we had extensively used as absorption in photoluminescence spectroscopes, Raman scattering, time resolved luminescence, refractive index spectroscopy, and others, with the subject to explore or characterize different condensed matters. Uh, such as photonic glasses and crystal polymers, nanoparticles, biofuel and biofuel samples, always considering a multidisciplinary investigation with different subjects. So, uh, to my talk, I intend to show you some studies developed in our group in which, uh, in which the Fourier transform infrared photoacoustic spectroscopy was combined with canonical discriminant analysis for evaluating the mid infrared absorption spectra of plants, fish, and other biologic systems. Following, uh, I will talk about the optical spectroscopy that we had uh, uh, used to monitor uh, natural environments. And in third topic, I will show a recent study that we developed with fish scales as a natural material to verify its potentiality for applying it as photonic materials particularly as optical temperature sensor. Finally, I will conclude my talk with some considerations and uh, acknowledgements. So uh, for the biologists, it is well known that the pheromones, the pheromones play a key role in many aspects of the life of insects. They can, be, they can use them to recognize and also to communicate when they get in touch. So uh, our hypothesis was in this first uh, subject to investigate if there are chemical differences in the particular hydrocarbons of these insects by using a methodology fast and reliable. So uh, for this proposal, propose, we used the uh, Fourier transform infrared photoacoustic methodology to discriminate queens, works, and males in the same species. In the case, we use the ectatoma visotoy. And in the second uh, subject, uh, we studied, uh, we used the same method to check if the methodology could be used to identify species within the same genus. Besides, we would like to answer if uh, it is possible to identify different colonies in the same species. So, in order to perform the experiments, we uh, separate 16. Uh, samples of males, 12 of workers, and five queens uh, of ectatoma visotoy species. And to the second subject, we sampled only workers being 10 of each colon from these two species uh, of the same genus, ectatoma visotoy and ectatoma blue. So, uh, in a brief explanation uh, about the photoacoustic effect, uh, it is caused when the radiation impinges on a sample surface, in our case, the, the uh, cuticle, the abdomen of the, the ants, uh, in a salad environment, in what is called the photoacoustic cell. So, due to the sample absorption and consequently the non radiative the excitation process of the modulated infrared beam, thermal waves are created in the Helium gas that we, we use it to purge it and it propagate it to the sensitive, sensitive microphone that is connected to the cell. For higher absorbance, higher will be the microphone signal. So, uh, in this figure, we plotted the average spectrum for the photoacoustic signal in the medium for added, uh, measured for cuticles of queens, workers, and, and males. Uh, we can note that it's not so easy to, to see a strong difference between them. So the statistical uh, analysis is required uh, to answer for us uh, if these three groups are different between them. So to do this, uh, these 13 functional groups uh, between this uh, interval of uh, wave number they were identified which are related to keratin and hydrocarbon, uh, hydrocarbons present in the cuticle. So all these peaks were identified, identified with respect with their wave number, functional groups, and the corresponding vibrational uh, modes. So their, their intensities uh, of each one 
were used to create a matrix to the multivariate statistical for further interpretation and examination uh, of the similarity between the groups. So, uh, in a multivariate statistical analysis, each peak uh, intensity is compared with the other peak, uh, peaks in the same spectrum, and also it is compared with all the other peaks uh, in the other group, in the same and in the outside the group. So, the result, uh, after comparing all the spectra, the method uh, defines for it a spectrum two canonical roads to turn easy the visualization in a bidimensional figure. So, in this figure, uh, we plotted the first and second canonical roads obtained for all spectrum. Uh, here, each letter uh, corresponds to one infrared spectrum with M indicating males, uh, W uh, workers, and key uh, queens. As the ellipses are not overlapped, this is an indication that there is difference between the cases of ectatoma uh, visotoid. The results indicated these uh, four peaks uh, as the main responsible by the separation of, ellipse, of the ellipses. We correspond to keratin, these three ones, and hydrocarbon, uh, this last one. Uh, particularly, this last uh, defines the queen's position in the canonical road graph to the right side, indicating higher concentration of C8 free or C8 uh, radical in queens than in males and workers. In opposite side, the lower hydrocarbon content in males is greater to their a function in the column because males do not need a well defined identity except for sexual uh, identification. So, the larger ellipse for the queens group is explained by the supposition that the queens came from different columns during column fundation, a uh, phenomenon known as primary polygyny. Our hypothesis is that a single queen could have founded the column and the other queens were adopted, which is known as secondary polygyny. In situations of primary and second polygyny, it is very difficult to determine uh, by the biologists if all the queens are egg layers or if only one of them executes this function in the colony. So uh, our results are indicating here that these two uh, queens are egg layers because uh, of their proximity to the workers. Uh, so this is an interesting indication, and for the biologists, this is very important to know. So uh, with respect to the second subject, in which the idea was to differentiate species and, uh, and the columns, the same methodology was applied, and they obtained the first two canonical roads can be seen here in this figure. There was a clear differentiation between the species. We noted here a good separation between uh, the, the points. And the second, uh, second canonical road uh, could, could be used to explain uh, the separation between uh, the columns. Here we have these two ones, uh, not so different, but here a little bit more different between them. Difference uh, between the columns uh, uh, suggests that these species, in the case of the ectatoma visotoi, were collected in very close nests so that they can be closely related. Uh, so, uh, in summary, with these two studies, we firstly demonstrated that the combining the mid infrared absorption of cuticle of ants. Uh, applied directly in the cuticle uh, using photoacoustic signal. Uh, with canonical analysis, uh, multivariate analysis of the main uh, peak absorption peaks in the mid infrared region, it's possible to interpret differences in columns, species, and casts in the same column. The method represents a fat analysis with non destructive samples contributing significantly to the biological science, mainly when no sample preparation is uh, required. Since these uh, first studies, uh, many others were developed by our group and also by different groups around the world. Here I, uh, I give some examples. For instance, in this 
uh, we use it to discriminate soybean seeds between transgenic and conventional ones. In this study, we monitored the biodiesel and frying vegetable oils quality. In this uh, other example, we indicated the presence of soybean rust contamination in soy leaves. Uh, here, the mid infrared spectra were used to indicate the aid of VESPs in a colony. And here, the methodology was used to access the role of diet in the particular chemical composition uh, of plants. Um, finishing this section uh, of my talk and to connect to the, to the next one, uh, I would like to show the study that we developed with fish scales to access environmental integrity by using the same methodology described until, until here. We used a sample uh, scales from Astyanax out Paranispes, which is known as bioindicator due to its great adaptive exploratory capacity and a wide geographical distribution. Then considering uh, that all potential water contaminants or compounds that alter biological or chemically the water characteristics, uh, can interfere in fish physiology, which is reflected directly in the fish scales composition. Our study aimed to verify the potentiality of the methodology to identify differences in scales of this species, sampled in different streams with all characteristics in terms of integrity. Important to say that the scales consist of different organic compounds uh, water and mineral, and they can be understood having two distinct phases, which we call it as inside phase, which is smooth, fibrillar, and contains a higher concentration of collagen, and the outside phase, which is bony and rot, and is composed of a single mineral phase of calcium hydroxyapatite. The streams selected uh, to the experiment are located around the Dourado seat, that is indicated in green area in this figure. We organize it then as string number one, which is defined to have high integrity because its search is far from the urban area. It has preserved riparian vegetation with high dissolved oxygen concentration in the water and low electrical conductivity of the water. The stream number two uh, has its fount away from uh, urban area uh, but its course crossing an urban area, so that we consider it as moderately impacted. Finally, stream number three is definitely the most highly impacted stream because its fount is within do the Dorado's urban area. Its water uh, electrical conductivity is 470% higher than that measured for stream number one. And the dissolved oxygen concentrations is only 60% of those measured or determined uh, for stream number one. The curse of this stream number three is noted by the presence of underwood and much of the riparian vegetation is degraded. Deg it receives anthrop anthropogenic influence, including sewage and vast dis discharge from the urban area. So uh, here, the average mid infrared spectra obtained for scales sampled in, uh, sampled in these three uh, studied streams. Uh, it's possible to show that the inside and outside phases from scales uh, collected sampled in stream number one is very similar, whereas the spectra for streams number two and number three are quite different. So to better understand the, this difference, uh, uh, we obtained the following images with a scanning electron microscope, uh, which show a similar among, uh, a similarity among inside phase for the scales from the free streams, and also among inside and outside phase for scales from fish collected uh, in the from, from fish collected in the stream number one. This uh, fibrillar layer is characteristic from collagen fibers and it's expected for inside phase of scales or for scales extracted of young fishes, in which the osseous structure is less pronounced. So also the su su superficial osseous layer is expected to be observed in the outside phase of the scale, 
we can state that fish scales of stream number one has low superficial osseous layer, probably due to the fishes from these streams uh, are younger. Because this uh, observation, we decided to perform the, ex the excitation, the scales, with mid infrared radiation only in the inside phase of the scales. And so, uh, from the spectra of the inside phase of scales, the main absorption peaks also were uh, identified. The, the, they were used to assemble a matrix for multivariate statistical analysis, as described before, before in the ANTS uh, cuticle. Uh, from this analysis, the first and second canonical roads uh, were obtained and can be seen in this figure. Uh, here, the dispersion diagram for the first and second canonical roads show it a significant difference between the fish scales from different uh, streams. Uh, the peak at uh, 1,020, at 1,230 centimeters minus ones that correspond to the stretch of carbon nitrogen single bond was responsible for moving the ellipse for stream number three to the positive side which is caused by the feeding habitats or the food type that are available in the environment. It can be expected that protein concentration is in excess in stream number three because the water has a higher electrical conductivity and consequently a greater accumulation of organic matter. In the opposite direction, the peak at 2,970 centimeters minus one was significant in the first canonical road um, for stream number one, uh, because it brought the ellipse to the negative side. This is an indication that there is a greater accumulation of this compound in the collagen structure chain, which can also be associated with the low calcination of these scales. So in the literature, we found that this less, that in, in uh, less impacted sites as the stream number one, an increase uh, is observing the consumption of aquatic and terrestrial uh, anthropods followed by algae and sediment. And in more impacted sites, the most significant food research, research were sediments and terrestrial plants. This difference can influence our observation in the concentration of C8 uh, vibration modes. So uh, the results uh, uh, showed that the scales of uh, Astiana Xaltiparani species is an appropriate view indicator for environmental monitoring when they, their chemical composition is investigated directly by the Fourier transform infrared photoacoustic spectroscopy combined with multivariate statistical analysis. Once again, the uh, used methodology demonstrated to be an interesting, efficient, and very important tool for analyzing differences in the chemical composition of biological systems, useful to monitor the environment or to help with the understanding animal behavior in the nature. In following, uh, I would like to talk about the second topic of my presentation, but in the same way that I exposed to you here. Based in these uh, previous results, our group started looking for uh, other methods to be used in environmental science, which could be used in loco outside the laboratory. So we decided to apply the fluorescence spectroscopy directly in fish scales, also it can be used as view indicator. For this purpose, we used the same as Chianic fish tests that we uh, studied before that I show it for you now. A uh, systematic description of the methodology was also explored, including investigation of the best excitation uh, wavelength and the best scale side, if internal or external, uh, for the fluorescence signal, as well as the best part of the body for excitation of the scale submitted uh, to fluorescence analysis. Firstly, uh, sorry. We look the best excitation region to be used in the fluorescence spectroscopy, exciting the fish scale in different wavelengths in the UV blue region, and the emission was observed in the UV this range. Uh, in this excitation emission counterplot obtained for a fish scales, we see 
a broadband uh, for excitation and a broadband of emission uh, of this thing. It is known from literature that the main factors responsible for the observed fluorescence of fish scales are the fibrillary layers of collagen types and also uh, do the hydroxyapatite, the osseo uh, part of the scale. Due to the broad excitation region, uh, which could be indicative of different agents responsible to the fluorescence signal, the experiments were performed using the UV a excitation at 360 nanometers with uh, in uh, blue excitation at 405 nanometers which was chosen because it is very easy to be purchased and some diode laser models in this wavelength uh, are very cheap so uh, experiments were performed in these two excitations and the photon essence uh, was guided by a bifurcated optical fiber until the, uh, ap after the luminescence was detected, captured uh, by the bifurcated optical fiber until the po uh, portable spectrometer, so that uh, this apparatus is, is perfectly used in local. For posterior statistical analysis, uh, we sample several scales of different fishes in the same space. And for each scale, uh, we obtain the spectra by exciting both the outside and side faces of the scales, uh, like the, the, the study performed uh, with the absorption in the infrared region. So uh, it is important to mention that the, to collect a spectrum uh, like this one, in, in the fluorescence is very fast uh, with some units of seconds uh, of duration. So, uh, in this figure, we plotted the average fluorescence spectra that we obtained with the scales uh, from streams uh, number one, two, and three with uh, these and these excitations. Uh, in green is the outside excitation, and the, the uh, orange is the inside excitation. Following, uh, we made the deconvolution of the spectra uh, to identify the best Gaussian curves for fitting the experimental fluorescence data. In the literature, we found that the Gaussian centers, the, the Gaussians uh, centered here and here, are mainly re related to collagen, while those centered at the 424 and 576 nanometers are due to the hydroxyapatite. So these uh, wavelength positions were used to select the corresponding fluorescence intensity for each spectrum to construct a uh, matrix for multivariate discriminant analysis uh, with the wavelengths used as uh, variables. In this figure, uh, are plotted the scatter plots uh, of the first and second canonical rods obtained um, in the fluorescence signal. Uh, for all streams with the two excitations uh, in green, the outside excitation in, uh, in uh, orange to the inside excitation. So uh, for all experimental conditions, uh, the first canonical road has the most important explanation of the data. And the first and second together explain 100% of the differences among the streams. The positions of the ellipses uh, in each figure along the first canonical roads uh, reflect the integrity levels of the streams, as discussed above when was evaluated the uh, infrared study. So, uh, from the statistical analysis, it was possible to indicate uh, that the most relevant fluorescence intensity for discrimination of the streams are those corresponding to 440 uh, nanometer. While the less uh, the less relevant is the peak at 576 nanometer, independent of the excitation wavelength used and independently of the excitation in the inside or outside phase. So these results in, uh, indicate that the least important peak presents low sensitivity to environmental changes, while the most important peak is highly sensitive. This uh, subjects that the ratio of the fluorescence intensity of these two peaks 
could provide a good correlation with the abiotic and biotic environmental integrity. In order to confirm this uh, hypothesis, we calculated the ratio among these emissions, uh, and uh, uh, we plotted here in this figure against the corresponding electrical conductivities of the free streams studies, the electrical conductivity of the water, of course. The result uh, is here in green points uh, that we obtained uh, with these streams. Uh, the result uh, shows a very good correlation with the, uh, this parameter that is used to control or to monitor the water uh, quality in the rivers or streams. So we, compl uh, we complemented the, our results adding fluorescence measurements from scales of the same species in three other streams located in the same basin following the same procedure described previously. The obtained results are plotted in the figure as blue spheres here, uh, in which we can see that the fluorescence signal and the electroconductive, in fact, has good correlation. So, in summary, uh, the obtained results uh, also suggests that uh, after calibration and under specific conditions, an um, experimental prototype could be developed for in local research without any sample preparation or animal sacrifice. We could measure directly to inside the, the laser beam on the uh, surface of the fish. So until here, uh, we discussed the use of fish scales as the indicator, showing the correlation of their chemical composition with the environment and where the fishes were sampled. For these studies, the focus was to investigate the vibrational modes or the fluorescence of organic compounds of scales. Now, I would like to talk about the inorganic fraction that is also present in scales. As mentioned, uh, the scales have a bond structure, chemically compound, of calcium phosphate, colored hydroxyapatite, that has received special attention mainly due to the possibility to be used in medicine because it shows equivalence with human bone tissue. Besides, hydroxyapatite has received great attention due to its chemical structure, which is well accepted for the introduction of chemical elements, mainly hard earth ions. In this case, it can be used in photonic as biomaterial. For this study, we decided to investigate scales of tilapia fish that correspond to 52% of fish production in Brazil. With this expressive production, 30% of the fish are used as food, and the rest are carcasses, bones, skins, and scales, uh, which correspond to 2-4% of the fish. Per year in Brazil, the production of scales from this species is around 15 tons, a good quantity to be reutilized. So, as mentioned, the, the scales is also composed of a single mineral phase of calcium deficient hydroxapatite in the outside phase. Its structure is formed by a tetrahedral arrangement of phosphate in the unit cell, which is composed of 44 atoms of inorganic groups, such as calcium 2 plus, phosphate, and hydroxyl, arranged in a hexagonal shape. Some studies have shown that hydroxapatite has high porosity, which is a key property for different applications. And it also allows structural replacement that cause important changes in apatite, uh, such as volume, crystal, morphology, uh, solubility, thermal stability, and bioactivity. Therefore, hydroxapatite has the advantage to be doped with a variety of cations that can alter its characteristics for use in specific applications, such as biodegradable drug carriers, acting as uh, bioactive bone repairs and as coating for metallic uh, prosthetics. So, uh, after removed uh, from the fish, the scales uh, are washed with distilled water to remove the least the dirty and following dry, uh, they were dried to be weighted and mixed with a mass of European chloride in different proportions. 
we tested uh, one per two and one per three. Both masses were mixed in a water solution at the 50 Celsius degree by 24 hours. And after this procedure, the dried samples were heated in an oven at 60 Celsius degree for one hour. After this step, the samples were heated in a ramp uh, of 5 Celsius degree per minute until 1,100 Celsius degree, in which uh, it was maintained for one hour. Following the sample, uh, the sample were macerated and chilled to turn a thin powder that was tested as optical temperature sensor. So, before to show the obtained the results, I would like to explain what is expected expected to be noted when the hydroxapatite prepared with europium is excited in the visible region. So, in this scheme, uh, we can see some of the energy levels of europium three plus. When the material is excited in the blue, uh, the electron is promoted from level zero to level to number three, from where it can exhibit the luminescence in the red during the transition between the levels three and two. So, by increasing the sample temperature, it can be noted a uh, Boltzmann distribution between the level zero and one, so that the observed red emission is decreased with excitation in the blue. In a positive way, an increase in the red emission intensity is observed when the temperature increase and the excitation is done in the green region, which is the excitation that promotes the electron from level one to level three. In this figure, uh, we have an idea that what is happening uh, with the emission intensity here in the red region uh, for both excitations uh, when the temperature uh, increases. As an interpretation of the experimental data, we can calculate the fluorescence intensity ratio called at the literature as FIIR to calculate it with the temperature. So, uh, by performing this ratio and correlating with the temperature, we can use uh, this a sensor uh, to indicate the temperature of the uh, probe ambient. So, uh, in following, I will show the obtained results that in, that we obtained with hydroxapatite doped with europium uh, free plus. So, uh, we performed the experiments with the excitation of europium free plus, but we know that uh, we also observed the europium two plus in our samples. But we performed the experiment here, uh, exciting at 577 nanometers to promote, uh, promote the electrons from the 7F0 level to the 5D0 state. And we observed the photoluminescence in the red region that is shown here. Um, we observing the, the, the transition uh, here uh, from the 5D0 to 7F4 uh, state. The sample were heated uh, from 10, uh, from 30 to 60 Celsius degree. As expected, by increasing the temperature, uh, we observed a uh, the considerable decrease in the photoluminescence intensity, mainly due to the loss in the population of 7F0 that I showed before. Uh, by other side, the photoluminescence registered with the excitation at 612 nanometers increases. The signal increases here uh, when the temperature goes from 30 to 60 Celsius degree, reinforcing what was theoretically previewed. By calculating uh, the delta that is the ratio between the emission intensity registered with excitation at this wavelength, uh, by this wavelength, this growing curve was determined and it was fitted by an expression that considered the Boltzmann distribution between thermal coupled levels uh, with this theoretical curve, uh, because we have more points, it was possible to calculate the relative sensit sensibility that is defined by the temperature uh, dependence of the fluorescence uh, intensity ratio determined determined here 
normalized by the wound signal. In this case, we calculate how many percent the fluorescence signal intensity changes per unit of temperature. By the figure we found, the relative sensitivity around 3% per Kelvin, which can be considered high when compared with uh, some values found at the literature. For instance, here in this work, our own group registered a maximum of 1.7% per Kelvin at 333 Kelvin in a European 3 plus doped aluminophosphate glass. So, as usually is done when we are investigating uh, the optical sensor of temperature, uh, we looking for the, the optical materials uh, with some uh, looking for some technical advantages to turn the developed system available commercially. So, with this interest, we realized a test with other configuration in which only one excitation pump uh, is enough to control the temperature of a uh, dispositive. The idea is to pump the electron here uh, from the level zero to level, uh, to level three. Uh, and we observe the photoluminescence from level three to two uh, by increasing the temperature, we know that this signal will decrease. But uh, due to the, the, the Boltzmann distribution that there is in these uh, states, between these two states, there are a diminution of this population in three level, so that the fourth level uh, will increase your population, consequently will increase your luminescence signal. The difference between these two emissions uh, intensity as a function of the temperature is that one decreases uh, uh, and the, the other increases. So uh, both uh, in the rating between them uh, can help in us to find the temperature of the system. Uh, in our case uh, here, uh, we excite the hydroxapatite in 575 nanometers and we observed these two uh, regions here and here. Uh, we noted here an increase in this intensity, while uh, we observed here a decrease in the intensity when the temperature of the uh, sample uh, changed from 25 Celsius degree to 60 Celsius degree. Uh, performing the same uh, calculation than before, uh, we found a high relative sensitivity with maximum uh, of 3.25% approximately per Kelvin in this way uh, temperature, which is very high uh, when we compare with other European uh, systems at the literature. It is important to mention that the height observed sensibility is in the biological range. Uh, what is interested in application of this material to point cancer cells when it is used as medicine uh, driver in pharmacology, for instance. In summary, these results for applying the hydroxapatite doped with europium as optical temperature sensor is an indicative that other lanthanide can be incorporated in the hydroxapatite for photonic applications, which is being subject of present studies in uh, my group. So, uh, forwarding to the title of my talk, I hope to have offered you the importance of uh, multidisciplinary investigations uh, when the knowledge is overlapped to ease the comprehension of the natural environment to preserve the nature and to explore nature research for technical applications. About these and other subjects that uh, our group is exploring in the moment, we would be very happy to receive collaborations, proposals or, of you. Uh, we have opportunities for our masters and the PhD academics. And if there are some interests, please do not hesitate in contacting me. Uh, I would like to thank our university, WEMS, by all support given us during these years and the agencies that support our research uh, here, particularly FUNDECT, that is the agency of Mato Grosso do Sul, uh, and 
the CNPQ, CAPS, and FINEP, that are the most important Brazilian agencies. Finally, I would like to thank all the staff, mainly the Professor Luiz Humberto da Cunha Andrade and the Professor Junior Reis Silva, and the students that developed your research uh, with us. Thank you very much for your attention. I'm here to some comments and discussion. Thank you.